All right, hopefully everybody can see uh, the screen all right. And this is the first time that we've done this particular style meeting, but I wanted to give you an opportunity here today. Um, we're gonna be discussing how my wife and I, as an example, have been paying down our mortgage at an accelerated pace without having to earn more money. And I felt like that information might be helpful to you. So I just wanted to get in here and let you know right off the top, this information shared today is for explanation purposes only. While it represents actual data, any projection of increase does not imply that such savings are typical or even possible for some participants. So why do I give that up front? It's because I am not a CPA, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a tax lawyer. I am simply a real estate investor who is putting together some tools that I've been using that are helping me and I'm gonna share an example of that with you today and hopefully you can glean some information off of that. So please, I ask you to do your due diligence but use this information hopefully as a helpful guideline to just make you start thinking outside the box a little bit better. So welcome, thanks for coming. Um, I wanted to tell you just a brief little bit about me. Some of you know who I am, my name is Stephen Quinn. Again, I'm a real estate investor. I've uh, been working in two states now and planning on expanding that out further, um, but I am a local entrepreneur. My background is actually as a heating and air conditioning professional. I spent 10 years in that industry and uh, fixed furnace and AC systems uh, in the Western United States, and then ended up going on to essentially run the installation department for a business. And the further I got up that ladder, the more I realized I wasn't getting to my goals. You know, we all set out with a pace of what we want to accomplish, what we want to achieve. And I looked at my life and it just wasn't getting me there. I still lived paycheck to paycheck, even though I was making good money. And uh, so my wife and I decided that we needed to spread our wings and, and kind of take things over for ourselves, start taking back control of what we wanted to do and, and how to achieve our goals. So this is one of the things that we did to do that. Um, also, you see on their YouTube channel host, I do host a YouTube channel uh, set of videos. This hopefully will be one of those uh, videos in the series. So, and then the last thing I just put on here is a, a quote that I like. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think a lot of us think that we have to do it alone. And yet we live in an information age where things are so readily available that if we could collaborate and work together and stop being segregated from one another, that we could go so much farther and achieve so much more. So that being said, um, I did want to prove that I am actually a real estate investor. Here's some properties that I'm working on right now. Um, the two that you see on the left hand side of the screen in Sierra Vista, that is where I live. So those are two projects that I've currently got uh, listed for sale and you can see the potential profits and things listed there. On the right hand side of the screen are some things that I've been able to collaborate and do with other uh, investors and people that I collaborate with. So I've got two properties over there that we're working on and uh, again we've got some, uh, some nice potential profits there. So just to let you know a little bit about me. But let's get into the meat of things, right? So if you're ready, Let's talk about some things. So in order to kind of set the field of vision here, I need you to get a concept in your mind first. And the first part of that is to look at these two numbers, um, thinking about this as interest rate. So which is more, 21% or six? And for most of us, we would say that duh, the higher number, 21% is more than six. It's a bigger number. And so I like to kind of compare this a little bit and say, well, which is hotter, 32 degrees or one? Well, that depends. Are we talking Fahrenheit or Celsius? You see, so when we understand that 32 degrees is actually colder than one degree Celsius, why is that? This number is smaller. Well, the reason why is because the scale is different. Both measure temperature, but our scale has shifted in how we read it. So we need to understand that sometimes when we're talking about interest, and in money being spent, 21% uh, can actually be more expensive, or rather less expensive than 6% because the scales are different. So hold that thought for a little bit as we kind of plug forward. And I want to start to build an example. And as we do this, I want to talk about loans versus lines of credit. Because when we talked about that scale a minute ago, we need to understand that loans are bad and lines are better. Now, in a perfect world, if we could pay cash for everything, then we wouldn't have an issue at all. But understanding that we do need to utilize banks, especially me as an investor, I need to be able to work with the bank. So having good lines of credit are a good tool for me to have to be able to invest and do different things. But also, it's a better option as far as the amount of interest that I will have to pay on a debt as opposed to a loan. So we're gonna talk about why. 
So in order to do this, we're going to just use an average house. I don't know where you're watching this from in the country. If you're in New York, these numbers are going to seem awfully low. If you were in, I don't know, somewhere in the, the mid, Midwest, it may be actually kind of high for a house. So I just kind of used average numbers from what I'm used to seeing for a, a potential home. So we're going to say a $250,000 house. And we're going to build this box here. This box is going to re represent a mortgage over time. So the way we've done this is we've broken it up over 30 years at 6% interest. Remember, we were talking about that 21% versus 6. So we're going to click on here and show that if we were to actually run the calculations on this house, it would have about a $1,500 a month payment. And when we look at it over time, the red area is the interest that we spend per payment, while the green is the principal. So if we understand, hopefully you can see my mouse, that the very first payment that we make on a home is very little going to principal, the majority is going to interest. But as time goes by, more and more goes to principal until eventually it flips, okay? So let's just kind of segregate this out. We're gonna show our uh, information over time. So these are five-year increments. And as we hit out, what typically happens to the average person when they've lived in their home for about five years? Well, studies show that the average person will either move, they'll sell their house and move on to something else, or they'll refinance. And so what tends to happen is we go ahead and have this issue of resetting our loan. We never actually pay it off. And so when we look at this little window right here, let me just kind of break it down. So that first payment, 250 went to principal, 1250 went to interest. But when we get to year five, we set the, the loan back to the beginning. And now we go back to that very little going to principal and a lot going to our interest. And that happens over and over again. So I wanted to show you an actual screenshot of a loan calculator so that you can see that this is real information. So if we take that $250,000 loan at 6% interest over 30 years, we don't throw any extra payments on it, but look at our total payment. We're gonna spend 550, let's do this, $539,593.09 on a $250,000 house. So my question is, does that look like 6% interest to you? It doesn't. And yet it is. So just to kind of give you another example of this at work, if we were to take our $1,500 a month payment, times it over 12 months, we've now spent $17,986 to the bank. We've written a check for that much money. But if we go down here to our amortization schedule, which shows the breakdown, here's our payment, here's our interest, our principal, and then our balance. But we go down to payment number 12, and we can see that we've only reduced the balance, $246,000, uh, $246,929. So you've only affected the principal by $3,000 and you've been paying, you've spent $18,000 of your hard earned money for a year. Okay. So this is not 6% and we need to figure out how to benefit that. So in order to speed it up, we're going to go to this picture here. So we're going to shrink our $250,000 loan. And again, I hope that the mouse is visible on the screen. This is the first webinar we've done this style. So I just want you to see on this side of the box, the left side of the box, we're going to show how the actual payments are passing in time. So if we say number one, that's going to be our first payment and so on and so forth. On the right side of the box, we're going to actually show how much we fast forwarded the loan, how much further into the future it thinks it is based on the math. Okay. So what we're talking about today, the wonderful thing about it is not magic. It's just understanding the math so that we can put it together. So our first mortgage payment, we come over here and we need to do something special. We cannot behave the normal way or this doesn't work. So we're going to add a tool into our situation. And in this example, we're going to use a line of credit because as you recall earlier, I mentioned that lines of credit are better loans or worse. So if you have a loan, we're going to use a line of credit to help us accelerate the payoff of it. So the way we do this, we take in this example, a $10,000 line of credit and we move $10,000 from our mortgage over to our line of credit. Now, this is where a lot of people will get upset with me or are concerned. And they'll say, but Stephen, I don't want to add new debt to my life. And I look at it and I go, but do the math. We had $240,000 on the right, $10,000 on the left. We still have the same $250,000 worth of debt. All we've done is shifted where it's located but that shift actually causes some amazing things to start taking place. So follow with me and we're going to see where this goes. Okay. So we're going to go over here and look up on our amortization schedule, 
where we land. So if we go over to month 36, uh, we've got our balance down to about $240,000. So what I'm trying to tell you is that in that one $10,000 move, you fast forwarded your loan on your home 36 months. You wiped clean three years worth of payments. But the $10,000 still has to be paid off. So how do we speed that up? Well, the way we do that, and we're going to just use an example. So let's say you have a $4,000 income. That's, that's your monthly amount of money that you get. You take that and you normally would put it into your checking account and then go out and pay your bills. And if you're a good steward of your money, you might spend $3,250 on your bills, leaving $750 in your checking account or being stored away in a savings account, something of that nature. But this process keeps us in the rat race, so we're going to have to behave a little bit differently. So what we're going to start doing is attacking this debt with all of our income, not just what's left. So we take our $4,000 and we pass it through our checking account. We put all $4,000 onto our line of credit. What this does is then allow us to use the line of credit to spend on our bills, all 3250 of them. And now everybody's happy. It leaves us with $750 parked on our line of credit. This is where the math becomes important. When you leave an available balance on your line of credit, what that does for you is it reduces the amount of interest that can be charged on that debt. So you technically made a $4,000 payment to your line of credit, but spent $3,250, leaving yourself with a $750 available balance. But you take and do that over and over again every month, and after about 10 months, um, you've actually now paid that off. So what we're going to do, I said 10 months, 13 months, take, take my human nature there. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to walk over here. Now we've been 13 months down the road working on paying down our house. So we have to take our $240,000 and we look 13 months down the future. So I'm going to take us over to our amortization schedule and figure out where that is. So we add 13 months to the 36 of where we are. Now we know that our home's balance should be roughly $236,000. Bear with me here. So now we're at $236,000, but our line of credit is wiped clean. So what do we do? We take another $10,000 chunk and we move it over to our line of credit and the process starts over. So now we look at where we're at. We've now moved our loan 78 months into the future. How much time has actually gone by right now? So we've only lived in the home and made 13 payments, but our home loan thinks that we are 78, say that right, 78 months into the future. So we do it again and again and again. So this process is not a get rich quick, but it is a get out of interest payments quickly compared to what we normally would. So what I want to show you is if we were to just keep this process rolling, so we go from you know, $226,000, we move ourselves to 221, 91 months. Then we trunk another 10 over to our line of credit. Now we're at 116 months into the future. And we just keep plugging away at this process. And what tends to happen, I'm going to just fast forward us to about five and a half years, when most people would be ready to refinance their loan, you've actually reduced your home considerably down to a point where you have affected your balance, you've created equity, you could then sell that house, take the equity and help you move into the next one, or you could keep living in the home and continue paying it off more quickly. Now, I've seen a lot of things out there that say you can pay off a home in five to seven years. I 100% agree with that. This is not that method. But this is a method that most people can start utilizing with the situation you're currently in. Whether you've got good credit and you can chunk you know, larger amounts, maybe you have access to a much larger line than $10,000, you can do this a lot quicker. Or if you're somebody who is fully loaded with debt, has poor credit, this is something you can do as well, even though you'd say, but Steven, I can't get a line of credit. I don't, I don't have a line of credit. The truth is you can. We just have to get more creative. So for any of you that have questions and want to know more, definitely reach out to me and we can talk about it. But I hope you can kind of see some of the neat things. So in five and a half years of doing this little process of funneling your money through your line of credit and living off of that, then you can actually wipe away debt much quicker. So 16 years, we fast forwarded the loan in five and a half years. But here's the other cool part. You save $207,000 in interest attacking your debt in this way. And you wipe away 11 years of payments. So 
here's the neat thing is we do not have to be stuck in the debt that we're given. We can speed things up. We can work harder and get beyond this. Now, again, this is a quick brief overview and an example, but I hope it can draw some attention to what's out there. Again, it's not magic. It's just math and understanding the concepts that a loan at 6% is actually a higher interest rate than a line of credit at 21%. Now take it to another level when you can actually improve your credit. Can you imagine doing this process for a few years? Your credit's going to improve. Now you can do things at 0% interest or you can increase your line of credit with the bank. Lots of wonderful things can happen, okay? So I just wanted to leave this with you. We talked about it at the beginning, but there are no guarantees to the success that any individual will have using what was just explained to you. We advise that you get educated before taking on such endeavors because the price of failure is usually much greater than any education offered in the market today. Please take this for what it's worth. I love helping people get out of debt, but please do your due diligence. Go figure it out for yourself. I'm flawed. I am not perfect, but I hope I could show you that there is a different way out there to make things get better. So thanks for stopping by. That's all I had for you on this video. And uh, we'll take it. Uh, if this works out well, we'll definitely continue on and maybe give you some more examples and more things to look at. Thanks so much.